I've been singing that song the whole time. We didn't even try to. Your face. My sins. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. Um, um, um. Iman, don't you. Welcome back to another episode of the We love you guys. We thank you so much. That was so loud. Sorry. Headphone users, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Heavenly Bond. That was anointed. Where today we'll be talking about a very special, interesting topic. Okay, finish your sentence. I was helping you out because you were dragging it too much. Today we're going to be talking about a very special, interesting, and um, a very compelling topic. Compelling? Do you know what the word of... <laughs> compelling. It's going to be compelling. Buddy, do you know what compelling means? Google it. Google it. That does not go with what we're going to say. Google it, bro. Google it, bro. Why is this fly There is a fly here. This compelling. Fly. No, 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 no. Read, read it out loud. <laughs> read it out loud now. Read it out loud now. You were right. Read it out loud, the definition, because they don't know. They yes. may not know what it means. Come on, I got it. Compelling, evoking, interest, attention, admiration in a powerful, iris. Oh, oh. I don't know how to say that word. Iris- irresistible oh. way. Thank you. What? I know what I'm saying. That just where is he that's off. in me than he is in the world? Oh my goodness! So the one that's in me is oh the one that's compelling me to say the word. Can I get an amen, church? <laughs> the one that's in me is compelling me to move forward. What it is to be? Because what do we say before? <laughs> what did he say Continue before we got talking. on? What do we say before we got on the live? Before we got on the video, we say, "Holy Spirit, whatever you want to be said, let it be said." Uh huh. So that's a that and was so Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit moves. When you let it move. Oh, my goodness. Amen. It amen. goes wherever you want it to go. So today's uh, topic is... Hallelujah. Wanna... Can I get an amen, church? Not receiving it is crazy. I said amen not, in my mind. Uh, I said insane. amen in my mind. You guys already... Listen, Lord, forgive her for she does not know what she's done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Tell Y'all, we're going to talk about New Age. <clears throat> they already read the title. Witchcraft. All that buffoonery um, <laughs> that I believe a lot of people... <laughs> you cannot start like that, you know. <laughs> that a lot of people need to know, understand, okay. and see the dark side of it. We're here to um, help you guys understand why... Um, what is that called? Uh, when you're a Virgo, when you're a Sagittarius... Horoscope, we went on. When these horoscopers okay. are going to get scoped today, Okay. <laughs> We got one direct line, and that's the word of God to set you free and deliver you from what you're going through. Okay, so and we're gonna amen, be, church. Amen. We're yeah. gonna be speaking about New Age, and I just wanna bring this to light. We wanna talk about it because I feel like a lot of Christians are doing stuff like this, and they have no awareness that they are partaking to something that is not biblical, that is not godly, that is actually antichrist. Right. And the thing about New Age that I think is so interesting is that. Is is it comes in very sneaky. Mm-hmm. It's like a little bit of truth and a lot of lies. Yeah. And that's why people think, oh, it's good, it's positive. It's like energy, good energy, you know, whatever. But that is actually something that you're opening up yourself up for bad things to happen. Yes. And you're pretty much allowing it. So we wanna just bring some stuff to light. If you are doing this, um, we pray that this helps you bring it to look to the Lord mm-hmm. so it can help you set you free from it because like I said, a lot of Christians are doing this, and Christians are not. not <laughs> Christians are not even being aware. Christians are not being aware that they're doing it. So Amen. we just want to like bring it up. To no, yeah. Um, I think I think this is a very big deception and a perversion of what God wants to do. Yeah. And it's so wrong in so many ways. And just to kick it off, like even even you know Christians think that this is the right way to do things. 
And it's like you said, to an extent. It's like hidden with truth, but yet a bunch of lies behind it. Mm-hmm. Because let's start off as one thing. We can go straight to it, like manifestation. See, manifestation, when you manifest and when you want to speak certain things to come about, you're doing things out of your own will. And the Bible says, um, when Jesus taught us how to pray, he says, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So when we pray, we're submitting to God's will. And so when it, when, when we manifest things into our lives, we're manifesting what we want, not what God wants. And what people don't understand is that the Bible says that out of the, out of the tongue, uh, life and death is, comes out of the tongue. So you can speak life and death into, into your life. So it is not that manifestation is wrong because these are spiritual principles that are installed in the spirit. The Bible says it. Life and death is in the tongue, meaning your words have power, meaning whatever you say will come to pass. And the Bible also says that like you need to have faith as a mustard seed, and you have to have faith that all the things that are unseen right. Right? come to life. So there are like, like I said, it's, it's, it's truth, but mm-hmm. mixed in with so much toxic lies. That exactly. It's really toxic. So it's like when you see these things, these biblical principles, and then you see manifestations, it's like, a mirror is like it's the same thing i'm just basically doing what the bible says i'm speaking things into life um manifesting what i want but this is what it is though it's a perversion of what god wants because you're manifesting what you want in your life and we don't know any better better the bible says that he knows he's he he um he's the often omega the beginning and the end so that means that god knows our past present and future he lives in eternity he doesn't live in time and so he knows what's best for us and so as Christians, we need to understand that we need to, to we need to submit to his plans, not ours. And we manifest when we speak things into life that we want to come to pass. We're no longer in God's will. We're in our will. So there's no spiritual covering, whatever comes from that. So if you're praying for fame, you're praying for money, praying and manifesting is two different things. Because in Jesus' name, how do we end our prayer? In Jesus' name, may this come to pass. May what the Lord wants be done. Manifestation is not that. Manifestation is what I desire to do. Yeah. Like I was going to say this, that I think is the core of new age. The core of new age is that it makes you be your own God. Yes. That's what it's making. It's making you be the center of your world. And we see that in vision boards, in manifestation, in law of attraction, all these things. Like I grew up seeing that, um, reading the secret, mm-hmm. like that book about like, opening up things for yourself and you speaking things in existence and all these things it's pretty much saying you say what you want and you focus so hard like so big on this thing and it's gonna come to pass and that is what new age is is making you your own god and i have this verse here matthew 7 7 ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be and it will be open to you jeremiah 29 11 for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Understand that God has plans for us. He designed us to for a purpose and with a purpose, right? But again, God is so gracious that if we ask him for the desires of our hearts, mm-hmm. he will allow those things to come to pass if it's in his will. Amen. If it's not in his will, just rest assured that's not going to come to pass. You can do everything on the vision boards and everything. But if we are always submitted to the Lord, if we desire something and God allows it to come to pass, it's because it's under his will. Yes. But know that God's plans for our lives are way better. And he knows what we need. And I feel I feel like that's what happens with new age is like you think that 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 you want something, but yet God, God has something better for you. Mm-hmm. And you're pretty much blocking your blessing because you're so caught up on what you want. And that is like a really big thing about new age that i feel like people are not aware of it's like when you're not submitted to god like you said you are pretty much allowing things to come that are not covered by the blood and it can seem like really nice and packaged Mm -hmm. really beautifully but it's actually causing more harm than good exactly read that verse again um last verse that you just read for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future in the beginning of the verse, read it again. For I know the plans I have for you. Stop it right there. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Not I as as me, myself. The Lord is saying he knows. Because I was saying prior, he knows our past, present, and future. So he knows. And he has plans to prosper us. To not harm us. 
And so when we take authority over that and say, no, I want that. Yeah. God, this is why manifestation works. It's because what you're doing is you're still abiding in spiritual rule, but that spiritual rule is being used in a perverted way. You got to understand that. So when you manifest what you want, you're no longer under God's covering. So whatever comes, and the Bible says that the, the devil presents himself as an angel of light. I have so that. everything that you're seeing and you're thinking, this is exactly what I wanted, is going to leave you empty and it's going to leave you meaningless and with a void because you're doing what you want to do. You know what I mean? Because if you're doing what you want to do, the Bible says that the heart is deceitful mm -hmm. above all things. And what you're doing is you're following the desires of your heart that is outside of God's will. Because God says he will give you the desires of your heart when you're submitted to him. Not when you're in your own way. Not as a carnal person because then your desires are not of God. Your desires are for other things that will literally harm you and take over everything that you are in a bad way. You know that a lot of people that believe in New Age, which I want to low-key go to Google and we should read out loud what the beliefs of New Age is. But before I go there, people that believe in New Age, they say like, oh, the universe the universe gives me this. I, mm -hmm. I, the universe showed me this angel's number. The universe put this in my way. They are pretty much declining the existence of God, of a being. They believe that the universe is what's orchestrating all these things. Yeah. And it's just a very deluded mentality mm -hmm. because the universe is creation. Right. Who created creation? Yeah. God created it. It's a Bible verse. So people are like New Age is heavy on worshiping the creation instead and of the, the creator. creator. Heavy on that. Make it um, make sense. And you will see it in other examples that we're gonna bring up. Mm -hmm. But here it says that uh, the New Age worldview emphasizes holism and the idea that everything in existence is connected as part of a single whole. In doing so is rejecting both dualism of the Christian division of matter and spirit. So they reject right. matter and spirit. They yeah. believe that everything is whole. Everything is connected in one. From within. And From within. And it's stuff. like, yeah. that is anti-biblical. Yeah. And it's like, as you said, it, they go against biblical principles, obviously, because you're making yourself an idol. And so what people understand is that, like you said, they worship creation more than the creator. Mm -hmm. They go to these crystals thinking they're getting healing. Why are rocks giving you healing and not the healer, which is Christ? The Holy Spirit is our healer. The one that created those beautiful rocks. There's nothing so, wrong with creation. We love creation, but we don't worship creation because so they have no power. They have no power. And so what you're doing is you're chanting these demons, these devils to come and interfere in your life. And what he does is you are, you're going through something. The devil's smart. He's strategic. He's going to let it work for one time. He's going to give you peace over that for a week or so. And then he's going to come back with a torment. But little did you know, once you open up that one door, that one door, God knows how many demons can come and interfere into your life because of that door that you open. It's the same thing when you're at home and let's say you're going on a vacation trip and you leave your door wide open. You can't say what goes in and out of your house. You don't know if it's a fox can come in, a person can come and rob you, a rabbit can come in, a... a uh, whatever, a dog, you don't know. You have no control over what comes in and out because you left it wide open for anything to come. You did not lock your door. And so we don't have control over what comes in or what comes out when the door is open. Because when the door is open, now the devil has legal right to come into you and affect you in any way, shape, or form. That's what people who, let's say, had anxiety or were dealing with anxiety and they go to these rocks, all of a sudden now are dealing with homosexuality. And all of a sudden are dealing with other spirits and other demons that they never dealt with. And now they're feeling tempted over other things like that. You were never a drinker, but now you started playing with rocks to get peace for your breakup. And then and you now get you're deeper and deeper and deeper. Like, okay, I started with rocks, but then now I'm doing tarot cards and I'm doing yeah. this and I'm doing hot yoga and I'm doing all these things. And it's like, it just allows you like that little thing that you opened up. Yeah. It just makes you go deeper into it. Yes. And it makes it broader and broader and broader. And so... It's you so know, dangerous. You it's start, a slippery slope. Yeah, it is because now it's like now you're playing with tarot cards and you know you're reading your hands, your friend's palms, and all of this extra stuff that is a perversion of Christianity, a perversion of how God intended us to tap into the spiritual realm. And guys, white magic, black magic, uh, it's all new age rocks, all of, it's all witchcraft. All of no this witchcraft and witchcraft is 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 a pretty broad. It's a pretty broad category, bro, because the Bible says that. Disobedience is as equal as witchcraft, yeah. bro. Disobedience is as equal as witchcraft. So witchcraft is not just rocks and all this extra stuff, but witchcraft is manipulation, bro. Mm -hmm. 
people don't know that. But witchcraft is a form of manipulation. And so it goes deep. It goes deep. And yeah. so when people when people start understanding that a lot of these things that are outside of God's will will literally deteriorate your soul, bro. It will literally deteriorate your soul. And if you have any of these rocks, if you have any of these stuff, the evil eye, the evil eye That's to protect big you thing. from evil. How does an evil eye protect you from evil when it's called an evil eye? <laughs> oh, like make it make sense. It's an yeah. evil eye and it's protecting yeah. you from evil. It's opening doors for evil. It's so many things. Like when uh, our babies are born, they put like a little red string in their little wrist so they can like they Bro. can be protected yes. from evil or the evil eye, the blue thing, and like yes. they put it on their on their legs and like. You know you're opening up doors for that kid. You're opening up doors for that baby. You're like, giving you, you're giving the, the you're doubles. giving the legal the rights. Legal rights. You're giving them legal rights for them to do as they will in your kid's life. And people are so unaware. They think that they're spiritual, but they're actually super um, deceived, yes. and they are not aware of the spiritual realm because that's what you're doing. You're literally opening up doors for things to happen, and and they want to be the ones that are woke. But the Bible says that foolish is the one that doesn't believe in God, that says there's no God. The uh, person that says that there's no God, f they are foolish in the eyes of the Lord. And so they want to be woke. They want to be the smartest. We know everything. We know more. Third eye, open this, open that. When you're foolish in the eyes of God. Because what you're doing, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. They've been practicing these things for years now. These things have generations over generations being practiced. But what it is now is that we're in a different generation where everything has to be painted in a certain way so it can be more receptive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? New age has been happening. All of this it stuff has, has been happening. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, they speak about it. Um, how people used to worship creation more than the creator. Mm -hmm. All of these things statues have and statues and all this extra stuff has been going on. But now it's being cookie cuttered and being painted cute for you to do. And now it's a trend for you to have little rocks around your neck and all this extra stuff. And I tell you, every person that's walking around with these little necks and stuff like that, when people go out and interview them, they're deep in anxiety, bro. They're deep in depression. There's something had to happen to them where it's traumatic. And yet that's what led them to that. And so, they don't believe because usually they don't believe in spiritual, but they still do spiritual things. Right. It's never like, like I don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, do you believe in God? No, I don't believe in God, but I believe in these rocks that are spiritual. So it's like, yeah, you know, you want to believe in the spiritual when it's convenient to you, you know, when it's a hindrance to your soul, bro. And I feel like you're talking back to the Christians because I feel like us as Christians, like I said earlier, we do a lot of things from a place of not knowing Ign ignorance ignorance thank you like and that is very dangerous because you may be doing things right now that are affecting your walk with the lord and it's opening up doors in your life where it spiritually is hindering you because i know a lot of christians that do high yoga and that is not good yoga what? is is if you do your research, it is linked to so many spiritual connections and those poses and the chantings and the meditation and all these things are not good because it's pretty much making you set outside. Like it's making you um pretty much pull away from your body and tapping into the spirit. Yeah. And the way that it's happening is not from a biblical standpoint. You're chanting things. You are going to different poses to open up yourself to what? Right. You know, these things are idol worship. These poses don't just come about. These like poses all these things. is how people used to worship these spirits back yes. in the days. So now you're doing all this hot yoga stuff. You're chanting like, I am loved. Oh, I yes. Because I was going to say this. Like, I went to this um event one time. And then one of the parts of the event was this spiritual person to come in and kind of talk to us about spirituality. And one of the things that she taught us was the, ra the Raki method. And Reiki, Raki, I don't know the, <laughs> the name exactly. But it was so funny because I am a Christian and I already know what's up. But she was like, okay, guys, so we, I do this when I'm like, in, when I have anxious thoughts. I do this when I'm like sad. So pretty much the concept is you tap in the parts where your subconscious is more open. Something like that. It's, it's crazy. Don't Google it. Don't Google it. But it's like, Googling. but she was like, uh, like, do this. Like, I am beautiful. My mind is perfect. And you have to nah, tap bro. and say these things. And I was like, bro, I please the blood of what Jesus. What type of witchcraft are you teaching all these women? Like, it is insane. It is so deceptive. So deceptive. And I went to another event where um, a portion of the event was sound bath. And sound bath, if you don't know what sound bath, that's part of New Age. Mm. It's this thing where 
the frequencies of the ball yeah. makes you kind of tap detach, into no like it detaches yourself from like your body yeah it's so wicked and when people do this thing um it pretty much makes you feel like um like you're not in the moment like right. you're not present yeah. and i heard um i think it was kendall jenner she said in an interview like that's what helps her with her anxiety like the sound bath and mm-hmm. all these things people are coping with everything but god but like jesus. why not jesus yeah. Why not Jesus? Why not Jesus? Like you do everything: the sound bath, the high yoga, the reiki, the the horoscope, the new age, the the rocks, everything, and but it's not still Jesus? not giving you any type of peace in your soul because it's not. It's never gonna do that, and you're not going to God. It's really sad. But I've also seen so many um, testimonies of people that come from new age and they find well, Christ. Of course, and those are the most beautiful testimonies because. What they say all the time is like, bro, I did everything. And at the end of it, I was the most depressed, anxious person ever. Yeah. And the only person that gave me the peace and satisfaction and joy was Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is the truth. No, literally. And it's like these things, these frequencies and all these stuff, bro, they're ways for, to, to, to detach you from your soul. What you're doing is you're getting to a certain state mentally that you're no longer where you want to be. That's why when the Bible says to be sober-minded, for the devil comes like a prone lion. Being sober-minded is not just being drunk or high or under the influence. When you're tapping, when you're when you're tapping into these things, you're no longer sober-minded mm-hmm. because something else is taking control of you. So something else is trying to detach you from your soul to be able to come and be receptive over whatever it is that is being done. That's why in the um, you know, famous rappers like XX Tentacion, he used to talk about how I, with the music that I put out, I can make you feel how I want you to feel. Through the, the frequencies, frequencies, I can make you feel sad. I can make you feel upbeat. I can make you feel mellow. I can control how you feel based on what you're listening. So these frequencies have an effect on us, believe it or not. And so these people that are going to these things for peace when they're, when they're heavy uh, heavy burdened and they don't come to God, just, just literally reminds me of this verse in Matthew uh, 11, 28. It says, come to me all labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus says this, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls. My, for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Heavy on. You will find rest on your souls. These people's souls are literally heavy. heavy and and they're, they're burdensome. And they have such a void. They have such a void. They have a God-sized hole. They have such a void in their heart that they don't know why. And it's because you need that missing piece. That is Jesus. No rocks. No meditation. No Buddha, no white witchcraft, no no black magic, white magic, no all this cards. extra stuff, all this chanting, tarot cards, palm reading. None of those things will ever give you the satisfaction that Jesus will give you. And that is here. And so all these people that are thinking that they find satisfaction through this always tend to go back. It's always not enough. They want more. They want to go deeper. They want more rocks, more powerful this, more powerful that. And it's like a crave or crave from something that will not fulfill that craving. And the only thing that will fulfill that craving is Jesus. And there is a reason why God doesn't allow us to know tomorrow. There is a reason why God doesn't allow us to know what's going to happen in the future. That's why he wants us to focus on the now. Because as human beings, we cannot bear the thought of knowing our future. Mm-hmm. It can be so anxious to know what's going to happen. That's why God says in his word that do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow we worry about itself. And when you do these tarot cards and you do all these things and you try so hard to know your future hor- horoscopes, when you go and check your horoscope every day to see what's going to happen today and all these things, it's pretty much saying, God... I want to take over and I want to take ownership of my life. I need to know what's going to happen. I want to take control, 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 control. And God says, you have to surrender because when you surrender your control, when you surrender what you want to do, you have so much peace knowing that whoever is, which is God, God is pretty much orchestrating your life in a beautiful way. And you're just resting in him. And people that are doing new age and the people that are deep in, in spirituality, they don't have that rest that God gives because literally his yoke is light. His yeah. yoke is easy. And that is so unfortunate that many people don't have that rest because they want to have control. And literally all these things that are set in place like horoscopes and new age. And um, I want to look you talk about horoscopes real quick because I used to do that mm-hmm. when I was younger. I was 
so fascinated, I'm going to be honest, about yeah. the horoscopes and everything. But God, really early on, I'm so thankful. Really early on, he showed me what horos- horoscope is. And I'm just so thankful that I don't do it anymore. Yeah. Years passed. But the horoscopes is people putting their identity in this. It says here that, uh, so Google says that it is a belief in astrology that a person's personality can be predicted using their sign of the zodiac. So pretty much it's like you can know your sign because of the sun, how the sun was mm-hmm. positioned when you were born in the moon and the stars and the fire. Like what? I don't know exactly. But all I know nah, is... yeah, something like that. That's why people be like, I'm a morning star. I'm a morning sun. No, 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 no. no. They don't say morning star. What is it? Something like that? Like, I'm a sun no, baby. No, 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 no. They be like, my, my, my sun rising my is... My sun rising. Is a uh, gen, gen... I don't know. My, my moon <laughs> lower... No, no. Oh, they'd be Please. like, oh, what are you? Are you a Gemini? Oh. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, no, you're a Gemini. is crazy. Sagittarius? Sagittarius? Oh. Yeah, we're not compatible. Like, what are you doing? Like, when you do that, <laughs> you are you know what you were doing? You're becoming one with these demons. These Sagittarius, these Libras, all these, these are demons. And these are identities of demons. And so, you know how many times I've told um uh my female friends, like, when I was in the world, I used to be like, oh, like, you're a Libra. So, wait, you're this, you're that. And I would tell them the attributes. And they were like, yeah, that's a Libra. And I was like, no, I just described you Sagittarius. So, you're just saying stuff. Just <laughs> <laughs> So, now you're just saying stuff. And I caught wait, you. So like, you be lying. That's crazy. So, you get yeah. one different zodiac, yeah, I like, gave them zodiac personality? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm a this, I'm a that. And then they'd be like, oh, yeah, you're a Libra. And I'm like, yeah, no, I give you a different zodiac. So, it's like, they, they, they just be accepting everything. And they're so receptive over stuff that it is literally demonic. And it's like, yeah. bro. You're literally becoming one with these demons. That's what it is. Is these are these personalities are demonic things that you are, are receiving and saying, Yes, I am becoming one with this demon. And so this demon has legal rights to be in you. The demons are always trying to deceive us and trick us. Bro, it's a spiritual it battle, bro. The Bible says You're allowing not, them to get their, their way. Literally, bro. The Bible says that we not we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of the air, bro. Yeah. So when you're coming, you gotta understand when you're accepting these things, when you're saying yes, that's who I am, you're you're, you're, you're attaching your identity you're, to it. Yes, you're attaching your identity to it, bro. Yeah. That's what you're doing. You're becoming receptive over it. And that is crazy. Bro. Another thing here, um, I Google this because I'm so fascinated about it. The angel's number. So your angel number, have you seen that? Like 222. Two, two. Yeah, oh my three, gosh. Three, three. Like they circle like the time, like uh-huh. 111. One, one. Yeah. Like make a wish, 1111. 11. Oh my goodness. <laughs> your oh, angel nice. number is a like set... That. Your angel number is a set of numbers created from your birth date or name. Each angel number has a special meaning from the universe and carries a message from a higher power. So when you see that message, wow. is the angel talking to you? Yeah, you they, the double pain is the angel of light. Look yep. at it. Look how beautiful. Literally, no. That's Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. Satan disguises himself as angel of light. Well, oh, are you ready for this? Each angel number has a special meaning from the universe and it carries a message from a higher power. Your angel number might be just one number or it could be two, three, or even four digits. Wow. So literally this is deceiving you. Okay, this is deceiving, this is deceiving you. And it sounds very convincing and innocent and not wicked because it's not scary, right? Oh, one, 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 two, 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 four, 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 four. It doesn't sound very scary that's why people are not running away from it but the universe can tell you anything the angels can't speak to you these are not in numbers that's not biblical you don't you don't see that nowhere in the bible and that's not not even like these are spirit guides you know what i'm saying like these are spirit guides these are there's certain spirits that are assigned to your life to just monitor you they're called monitoring spirits to monitor you and your study behaviors. you and your behaviors. So when they see that it's the right time to show you something to be like, it's the universe. They're going to do it. They're going to use whatever it is to keep you in that deception. Until you proclaim and denounce these things, they have legal rights to go and keep you in deception mm-hmm. because you are allowing them to. And so these monitoring spirits are showing you this at 11-11 or your ex sex you or whatever like, oh, that's the universe. Give mm-hmm. me a sign. Whatever, whatever. When you read something and you look at the time, oh, one, one, one. Oh, that's the universe doing this. No, these are spirits that are knowing that you're already deceived. So they're feeding on to your deception. <laughs> that's it, bro. <laughs> that's it. These, these spirits is wicked, bro. They're, yeah. they're pretty I already wicked. wrote it here. Um, 
we have angels watching over us, but nowhere in the Bible we see angels speaking in numbers. Those who believe in angel numbers believe that once you see your angel number, you have found your angelic or spiritual guide. Jesus Christ. But the spirits or angelic guides are demons. Demons are always trying to trick and deceive us. And only God can give us protection, guidance, help. No angel, no number, no spiritual guides. Only God can give us that. And I feel like that is just so unfortunate how so many people are being deceived day in and day out because they believe that they found their spiritual guide. I feel like the, the universe is giving them so many like signs and confirming things from them. And like it's just all about them, 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 me, 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 me. And that is just literally the opposite of what God says that we should do and act and, and behave. Bro. And it's deceiving you. It's making you believe that you control your world, you control your own mind, you control your own thoughts, and you cannot do that. And the fact is, like, I have so many um, girlfriends from the world, like girlfriends, mm-hmm. um, and it's like they're so deep in it, bro. And I, I, I know their life. You know what I mean, we grew up together, like we're friends, and um, I see what they post about these angel numbers and saying like looking for my chakras and all this extra stuff, looking for peace. And, bro, I just know how broken they are because I know them personally. Yeah. You can't tell me, like, Instagram is telling one thing. Like, I know you personally. I know what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? And they're so broken, so broken, so depressed, and they lean towards these things for healing when I know personally that you're still broken because I see what you post afterwards. I see your reposts on TikTok talking about how you're lonely and you have nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, and I know you on a personal level to know how much of a flaw this is how much of a fake persona you're posting saying that these rocks are giving you peace that you're getting you know the calm that you need and all this extra stuff when i know you in real life and you're in deep depression you know what i'm saying and i've tried to reach out to them i try to speak to them um but they're just very um hostile and i understand it's the spirit behind them working through that you know what i'm saying but i pray for them and i hope that they come to repentance of course, because the the enemy doesn't want you to come to light of course not and and i've i've given them words of knowledge that the lord has given me that is so spot on that they're like, whoa, like, how did you know that? Like, was that a angel God or whatever? I'm like, no, it's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Homie, it's the Lord giving me this word because I know of that a God that I serve. And whoever you're serving is not letting you see that, you know? It's, and it's, it's so sad because I know them on a personal level and they're literally in bondage because yeah. of these rocks. Yeah, I've noticed that the pattern of people that usually are doing those things is like they are in deep hurt and they've been yeah. hurt. And they are trying to heal. Mm-hmm. But they're just going to the wrong place to get healing. Yep. And that is the unfortunate thing. Like, you're not going to get healing from doing all these things and doing and doing and doing. God says you have to rest. And that's a beautiful thing about the Lord. It's like, you know, he's calling you to rest in him. He's calling mm-hmm. you to trust in him. He's calling you to surrender your life to him. And people believe that's so easy. That it's too easy for them to believe. Yeah. Like, it is too easy for me to... Follow a God who says, I don't have to do, I just have to be. Right. And he will take care of the rest. You know, it's so hard because the Bible says that it's a free gift that he gives. It's a free gift of salvation. And because it's free, people are saying, hold on. People are very, they question they're it. questioning why is it free. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And that's the problem. Because it's free, it's freely given. It's not deserved. It's just given. People question it when it's so easy as just, just receiving the gift, bro. Receive what he done on the cross for you. And you will find that healing. Like, I'm sure if there was a price tag there, like, oh, you have to, for example, like in other religions, you have to work, you have to be good. Right. And your good has to outweigh the bad. That would be like, oh, that makes sense. You know, like I have to strive to to be good. Yeah. Like when you ask somebody like, oh, why you think you're going to go to heaven? Oh, because I'm good and I'm I'm helping others. That's the first thing they say. That's the first thing. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Your goodness doesn't outweigh the bad. Like the bad, just alone one thought. Mm -hmm. And we have how many like, Thousands of thoughts a day. A day yeah. We have so many thoughts a day, but like a one bad thought is deserving for you to go to hell. Right. So the the line is very thin. Like our God is perfect. Our God is perfect. And we holy. And we have not even been near perfection. We don't know what perfection is because we're all imperfect and everything around us, it may seem as perfect. Nothing is perfect mm-hmm. because we're imperfect beings. And so when God says none are good, no not one, he means it. He means it. None are good. Not one. And the Bible says that your works are like filthy rags to me. What can you do? I've given you everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you're saying I'm a good person, no, you're not. 
you've done good things, but you're not a good person. It's if you not, lied in the eyes of God because he's so perfect, that is wrong. Yeah. If you look at upon a woman with lust, you already committed adultery in your heart. That's how deep my God goes because he is a perfect God. He is a holy God. And the only way that you can go to heaven is by receiving Jesus Christ in your heart, receiving him as your Lord and Savior. Because what he does is the Bible says that we're made righteous through the blood. Through the blood, we're made righteous. And so when we see, when we go face to face with God, he's not he going to see our see sins. He's going to see the blood that is covering us. And he said, you're made righteous through him. And that's why you're able to come into the kingdom. He see his son. He see his son. Mm -hmm. And so once you receive that gift, you're receiving what he did on the cross for you. Something that we cannot, it cannot be earned. No. It cannot be, it cannot be done. It cannot be worked for. Mm -hmm. It is freely given and freely deserved. Yeah. That's good. That is good. And I just want to say like, if you know, if you stumble across this video, you don't know who we are. Like, know that and you don't know about jesus know that god loves you god loves you Amen. and he wants to take your hurt away from you he wants to heal you Amen. he sees you and he knows what you're going through right now mm -hmm. and i'm telling you we've come from the world we were not raised in christian households we were not raised that way mm -hmm. so know that we went through so much and we try to do it all by ourselves we try yeah. doing it on our own and it didn't work it's not gonna work ever you're just wasting your time right now so just know that just run to him. If you don't know who he is, ask. I asked. I was like, God, whoever you are, I don't know who you are, reveal yourself to me. Right. And he will reveal himself to you. Yes. But you got to ask and believe and have faith that he will come through. And I promise you, Jesus Christ is going to come through for you. Yeah. And he's going to take everything, all that pain, all that hurt, all that suffering, all that trauma that you have right now that you're trying to cover it and mask it with crystals and rocks and all these things. He's going to take it away from you and make you new. Yeah. He's going to give you love that you've never experienced before. Amen. He's going to take care of you. Amen. So if you don't know about Jesus, just ask him to come in your heart. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, he will come through because he promises us that in the word. Yes. And you're worthy and he loves you. He literally loves you. No matter what you did, nothing is too bad for him. Amen. Now, you got into the place where you've learned um, what you're doing is wrong. You know you have all these evil eyes and all these tarot cards around your house. Now what? This is what you're going to do. You're going to grab everything you have and put it in a bag and you're going to throw it out. You're going to throw it out. You cannot mm -hmm. just leave it in the box in your home mm -hmm. because God cannot operate because that is still there in your house. It still has legal authority. So when you see shadows moving in your home, when you hear weird noises and stuff like that, it's They're because still in your home. It's still in your home because that is what's giving them legal rights. Right. An object is giving them legal rights. And so that is, you already, you already spoke life to it, so it already has an authority. So you have to grab everything, throw it out. Afterwards, you have to go in deep prayer and start denouncing any any legal rights of any demon and any devil that has came into your life and interfered with God's calling in your life. Any devil, any contract that you've made with the devil. Any open doors. Any open door that you've opened, you have to start denouncing it. I denounce it in the name of Jesus. I am set free and I'm covered by the blood of Christ. You're going to denounce. You're going to go to war in the spirit. You're going to intercede for you. You're going to see for yourself. Say, God, deliver me from any demons and anything that is hindering me. From walking this walk with you. You're going to start denouncing it. You're going to start proclaiming it. You're going to start being set free. And after you have been set free, after you start praying and you start cutting off any contracts that you have with the devil, you're going to pray over your home. You're going to get some anointing oil. You're going to pray over the oil and put the oil in your walls, in your windows, pray your walk. door. Just walk and pray around you're, your house. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to let the Holy Spirit come and reside in your home. You're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come. You can play some worship music, do whatever, and set the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to move. And from now on, from that day on forward, make sure that you do not give the devil legal rights to come back. Because once demons flee, they flee for a season. But they're still dwelling and in, in, in just like a roaring lion. Yes. Seeking. When is another opportunity? Exactly. And so the Bible says that um, the demons, what they do is they flee for a season and they come back to its host and see that the house is empty. And clean and swept, it says. And so then the demon invites seven more more wicked spirits to come and dwell in that place. Why does it say that? Because the, the, the home was empty. It was clean. Meaning you got delivered. It's talking about a temple. It's not a physical it's, home. It's talking it's about your, your temple. Spirit. When you get set free, it flees for a season. comes back and it sees that your temple is clean. It's set in order. And it's empty. So it invites seven more wicked spirits to come and reside. Why does it invite seven more spirits if it's clean and empty? Because it's empty. 
You're not filling yourself up with the word of God. That's why it has the legal rights to come back. Because you have not filled yourself with the Lord. It can come back because once you open that door and you're not filled with the word, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, it can come back with seven more wicked spirits. So it'll be harder for you than it was before. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that if you're making a decision to let go of your past life, to let go of a new age, to let go of all these witchcraft and these crystals and stuff like that, you fill yourself up with the word of God. You fill yourself up with the spirit of God and be filled with with the spirit of God to be able to not let these spirits come back and, and, and attack you. You know, when people come to Christ, they'll be like, oh, just be ready because you're going to feel a stronger spirit to attack. Right. It's because of that. Because when you give your life to Christ and you're not playing no more, you're not you're not black or white, mm -hmm. you're just full on for the Lord, the enemy is going to try even harder. It's going to attack you even yeah, harder. Yeah, you're a target now. You are a really target because now you are walking in truth. You're walking mm -hmm. with the winning team, which yep. is Christians, Christianity. Now, The thing is that when we are in the spirit, you can be a, a baby in your spirit. Of course. Or you're going to be a giant in the spirit. Okay. If they see that, that you cleaned up, like you said, you're empty and stuff, but you're still a baby in your spirit. You're not, you're not bold in your spirit. You're not growing in your spiritual, right. um, uh, walk in your spiritual walk. Then they're going to be like, okay, it's easy. Let's go back. Yeah. And let's go back, but let's go harder now. Let's attack yeah. our health. Let's attack our mind. Let's attack our, our relationships. Seven more wicked spirits. Let's attack anything that she loves because she won't be able to fight back. Right. But now you have to learn how to become a spiritual giant and learn how to fight and intercede mm -hmm. in the spirit Amen. because they're attacking you spiritually, yes. not physically. Yes. And so, um, there was this one point that I wanted to make Holy Spirit. We're talking about before this. There was this point that I wanted to make. I forgot if it comes back to me, praise the Lord. But if it doesn't, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, I really hope that this was insightful for you. And just know that just pray about it. Pray about it. Meditate about it. If you feel like something was convicting, bring yeah. it up to the Lord. Um, Understand that, you know, even like meditation and stuff like that. The Bible says to meditate on the word of God day and night. Meditate on the, on the word of God. So meditating in the presence of the Lord, not in just yourself because what you do when you're meditating is you're clearing out your mind you're clearing everything out you're doing certain breath work or whatever it's, it's emptying out your mind as much meditation is it's stopping yeah. thoughts it's stopping your thoughts so mm -hmm. it's like for what it's for what you know when the bible says to meditate on the word of god so when you are you're focusing on one thing because when you're meditating you have to focus you have to be really really focused to have nothing going on and just be empty and That's like a playground for the for the devil to come. But you see how like the devil just is a copycat of God. No, because God says meditate in the Word. Yeah, and he says, "Oh, meditate," but like yeah. don't don't think about nothing. Nothing. And it's like he literally just takes everything he's and just twist it, and it sounds convincing, mm -hmm. but it's not. So you have to back it up with the Word of God. You can't just take something and run with it, right. like spiritual angels or or spirit spirit guides or angel numbers. Back it up with the word. Is that true? Horoscopes. Uh, learning your personality through horoscopes. Go to the Bible and read about who we have to find our personality in. Right. Um, rocks. Creation. Are we mm -hmm. supposed to worship that? Go to the Bible and read about worshiping idols and idols and all these things. Amen. Everything has to go back to the word. And you have to, okay, take it and now compare it. Yeah. with the word of God. Is it lining up with the word of God or is it not lining up with the word of, word of God? So um, my advice is to go to war in the spirit. You know, uh, a lot of these witches and warlocks and all these stuff, they wake up at 3 a.m. And the thing about them is most of them are more disciplined than even Christians. Mm -hmm. They're more so disciplined than Christians. They go out and wake up at certain times. They fast for weeks. They stay up 24 hours and all this extra stuff. They're so disciplined with the devil, but we're not disciplined with the Lord. And to me, that is just like... We have the right power in our side and we're not using it in the proper measures and in the proper way. So understand is that if you got to lose sleep, lose some sleep. How badly do you want God to use you? Because we can't just say God use me. And because you're just a very nice person and you read your word, God can use you. No, God needs to have people in his team equipped. It is not that you're not saved. You can be saved. But if you want to be used by God, you have to equip yourself in a certain way. And so Many you have are to lose called sleep. And, used and, and few are chosen. Are few and so chosen. if you're chosen, you have to understand that you have to take certain measures to meet those criteria, to meet those standards. You know what I'm saying? That's why there's different ranks in the military. That's why there's FBI, there's police, you know what I mean? The CIA. There's different ranks based on your skill level. So the spiritual realm is the same way. If you want God to use you in a certain way, you have to be able to lose sleep. You have to be able to let go of certain things that you like to do. You have to be able to literally leave your comfort. 
yeah, leave your comfort, deny your desires and say, God, I'm submitting to you. How do you want me to use you? So if I can advise you anything, make sure that you go and pray in the middle of the night, bro. Pray in the middle of the night. There's a reason why these warlocks and these and these, and these witches wake up at 3 a.m. Because at 3 a.m. Is, is when the, the spiritual home is most active. It's the most veil active. is so thin. Yeah. And so get up at 3. Get mm-hmm. the praying. Get the moving stuff in the spirit. Pray for your family. Break off generational curses. Pray over people that are stuck in new age and are deceived and are literally going through it. Pray, 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 and watch how walls will literally get knocked down, bro, in the Amen. spirit. Amen. There's power in prayer. There's power in interceding. There's power in you praying and sacrificing something for yourself for others through prayer. So, Because right. it's not about us, like new yeah. age. It's not. This life is not about us. It's about others. It's about Amen. loving others. And we're supposed to love God and love people, yes. right? So let's exercise that. It's, let's stop being so self-centered. Right. That's, God doesn't call us to be self-centered. God calls us to be selfless. And so a lot of people that, if you're watching this, you're coming out of new age, the same discipline that you have for new age, had for the Lord. And I promise you, your reward will be 10, th- 10 times more. You'll be used in a mighty way. Yes. So I think we basically covered everything. Amen. Don't believe in no witchcraft, white magic, blue magic, yoga, pink magic, yoga, none of that, three, bro. One, two, three, rely angel on numbers. The Lord. Yeah, like, come on. Like, rely on the Lord. Don't don't worship these these stars and shooting stars making a wish like <laughs> please find me that in the bible shooting stars <laughs> come on wish. like that's not from god that isn't from the lord that's his creation and we can right. love it and admire it right but you know how awesome is the creator the one that created all that, that? exactly on, like bro. he's loving you he wants to use you he wants to give you everything that's where the Why real not go power to him? resides yeah that's where the real power resides amen well we really hope that this was um, good for you and you learn something from it and we just pray that this was something that shifted your thoughts at least and just really convicted you and um, propelled you to the right direction and just know that we love you and we're praying for you and um, comment below if there's anything else you guys want us to talk about Amen. Um, any other topics because we're more than happy to talk about it so this was a really good one I know a lot of people have already set free and their eyes are open so praise the Lord for this one and yeah. um, we're happy for this so we love you guys We love you guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.